Well, good morning, and today is Tuesday, April 7th, getting toward the end of the school year, getting closer and closer all the time, and uh, exciting to uh, see some things that are um, going on in this world in the sense that we know that God is in control of things. Um, he's going to use these things to help bring glory to him, and then also that um, we can still learn about some things the way he worked in the past, because he will work in a similar way in the future, most likely. And so here we are. Um, on our history class, and it is um, the assignment that you have today is about a man who is named Franklin D. Roosevelt Delano is his middle name, man who became president um, after Warren Harding, and I'm sorry, after Herbert Hoover, and um, implemented some ideas and some plans in um, our country that had never been before very progressive, and, and that's a word that you'll often hear nowadays, <clears throat> progressive. Um, progressive, they, uh, a progressive person would say moving forward, and there's nothing wrong with moving forward. However, the ideas of government and the ideas of who was in control of things and who gets to decide things, that generally with progressives, you get a, a socialistic or communistic type of view that goes with that. And so today you'll have pages uh, 265 to 267 to read about um, FDR, which is the um, short name for Franklin Delano Roosevelt or the initials for him, but a lot of times you'll hear that. He is closely related, or was, I say close, he was distantly related to Theodore Roosevelt, and I think a third cousin or something like that, um, and uh, he was also related to 11 other presidents, and that's kind of an amazing thing there. Um, also in... Um, uh, today you have pages 189 and 190. Now, 189 and 190, one moment here, are uh, work text pages that you have that um, talk about Roosevelt's programs on the front page, and then also talks about the New Deal on the back page. Now, um, as far as that goes, uh, as far as the, um, the New Deal and all that stuff goes, um, what you need to know is, in particular, um, the uh, three major um, areas and programs that he had developed, the NRA, it's not the National Rifle Association, which is what NRA people think of today, the CCC and the FDIC. Now, the FDIC, Federal Department, uh, Federal, um, I can't remember the, but Insurance Corporation, basically it's an insurance for banks and for uh, basically that the government will back up banks and it's an insurance that they pay into, the banks pay into, in order to be a part of this. And so it's a required, well, it's not required for a bank, but um, generally all, almost every single bank has this. And it's an insurance company that basically if they fail, if that bank fails, the people who had their money invested in it would get their money back through this insurance. And that allows our banks to use your money, my money, in order to um, uh, get there uh, in order to protect our money from being um, wasted and then lost uh, that we don't have it anymore up to a certain amount of money which I think is $250,000 per uh, bank for an account or for a person. So we're going to go over this back page together and uh, so if you want to have that out page 190 we're going to do it a little bit of it together and give you basically the three um, I'm going to give you the three main categories which are the blue circled areas of blue um, elliptical the ones that are that are circled uh, the bottom one I'm going to let you fill in the information for the five things that are there because that one's easy to but there's a lot to it but the other two I'm going to give you the um, information that goes with it so one of the first one on the top left is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and at this time um, it promised a person now you're talking about over a hundred years ago but it promised a person up to twenty five hundred dollars of his money if the bank failed. And so if you had more than $2,500 in there, you would have lost the rest of it, but you'd, you'd have $2,500 in the bank. And, and that's a, that was a lot of money back then, a lot of money back then. We're talking about equal to hundreds of thousands of dollars today. The intent of it at the bottom there, it says it is intended to stop runs on the bank. All right, and so that information there is to stop the runs on the bank um, because People were afraid their money was going to disappear, that they weren't going to have it because they didn't have this insurance beforehand. And so it, it, uh, allowed, the, uh, it allowed people a little bit of trust that their money was still going to be there, that it wasn't just going to disappear and all these rich 
bankers were going to um, abscond with it. Well, on the other side, the NRA was the National Recovery Administration. The National Recovery Administration um, basically um, was created for the purpose of making um, business a little bit uh, friendlier toward each other. Now, it, it involved a little bit more of government control, so there was a little bit of socialism in this in the sense that the government uh, was telling businesses what they could do. But in a sense, they were also, it was, it was just trying to make it um, less volatile uh, so that um, uh, businesses did not uh, do some things that they um, would have normally done to uh, outdo each other. Because businesses are there for the people. Um, so it's, you know, some people wouldn't, didn't agree. And I, I agree that at the time, it probably helped a little bit, but in the long run, it needed to be um, reduced. And it has been through different presidents um, and administrations uh, throughout the uh, decades after that. But anyway, on the National Recovery Administration, the top there says it forbade businesses from competing with each other. Forbade businesses, it, I mean, it didn't allow them to compete with each other. And that was for the purpose of keeping businesses open, keeping people employed so that it wasn't um, all one business that was dominating. In a sense, that's sort of happening now with Amazon, if you think about it. Now, Amazon uses other businesses, so in that sense, it's, it's different in the sense that it uses other businesses to sell things through them. Uh, but Amazon has a, 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 a pretty big monopoly on certain types of things, and so um, they, they, uh, it's very possible that it could come in the future that Amazon will be um, – busted or, or they call it monopoly busting or, or um, uh, I can't remember what the exact wording is for it, but basically they, they get it so that Amazon is not allowed to control a certain area of the market. Um, the next one is required businesses to pay workers a minimum wage. So this is when the minimum wage was established. And with that being established, then um, what you find out is that uh, that minimum wage, in other words, you had to pay people at least a certain amount of money. And um, an important part, I think, as far as um, uh, what a uh, what a person knows, then they, they can at least make this amount of money. And, and it may not have been enough to take care of their family, but at least it was more than what they probably would have gotten because of desperation. They would have been willing to take something lower. But it's required that businesses um, pay at least a certain amount to people. And, of course, the more valuable the job is, then obviously the higher they would pay. Oh, excuse me. Uh, but... Um, they would uh, pay at least um, that minimum amount. I remember when I first started working, when I was um, uh, 16 years old and I was working for a drugstore, I was paid the high amount of $3.15. And I remember how excited I was when I got a raise of $0.10 cents an hour to three twenty-five, And I thought that was a lot of money at that time. This was back in the 1970s, 19, early, late 1970s, early 1980s. And you see how things have changed in, in that time frame. The minimum wage now is seven something, more than twice that. Uh, but of course, in some places, they uh, basically cities have increased it to fifteen dollars an hour. But what they found out that's happened in these areas that that have done that that basically these businesses had to fire a lot of people, so you had less people working now um, for that amount of money for $15 an hour. And so it really uh, has hurt the businesses in the long run, it's, uh, and it's hurt the employees as well, because even though some employees are making that $15 minimum wage, uh, what these cities are trying to do is to force these companies to pay a certain amount to take it out of profits or reinvestment or whatever it is that they are uh, would use it for otherwise. All right, well, that's it for uh, today. You can fill that in the bottom section on page 189 about FDR's deals. I'm, I'm sorry, Pete. Yeah, 189 on FDR's deals. And do that. Hopefully you watch this video. Otherwise, you didn't get the help that you could have gotten. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.